morning. It's Monday morning. How are you all? Hope you're all doing great. I'm feeling a little why bit... <laughs> Siri said, why thanks? Um, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed this morning because we're currently working on our bedroom and every time I embark on a renovation project, I think this time we'll be organized and it won't impact work and we'll like, you know, treat it as work because it is work and it will be fine. Um, <laughs> and we'll like fit it in. And every time I say that, I always underestimate how much time we actually both spend at our computers. I suppose that's the part of this job that you don't see as much. Hello, Roxy. Is that we actually spend such a lot of our time. She wants, she wants to go on a WAL case. So she's like, why have we not left yet? Um, I'm just going to put some rosemary oil in my hair. This is the one I use, Mila, influenced by TikTok but it actually legitimately works. This is like um, rosemary, mint, scalp and hair strengthening oil infused with biotin and it's for daily use. You can use it on your scalp, on the ends of your hair. I use it once a week, all throughout my hair like I'm gonna do now. And then occasionally on the ends of my hair just for styling. Um, but I think I showed you a while ago that I had this patch here that wasn't like proper hair or was like a, a gap when I put my hair up. This side was okay, because um, that's almost like just where my hair grows, but this side had like a gap. And you can see that all of this hair has grown back. Like all these long pieces here have all grown back. And now my um, hairline is so much better. I mean, it's not brushed, so it doesn't look very neat, but I don't have the gaps. And I think it's down to this. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, I always convince myself that renovation projects won't impact work. Um, I think that's the builders arriving. See the chaos? It always does. And it's because I spend a lot of time at the computer and, Roxy, come here. Come here. And obviously we work with brands and we edit videos. We edit content for Instagram. I'm currently working on a big project, which you're all aware of, which takes time and also working on my own project in redesigning and rebranding our website which is really important and that means we're trying to do lots of new recipes and photo shoots which hopefully you will see soon so i'll have a new website and um, loads of content on there for you to enjoy lots of new recipes and we're trying out really fun ways of shooting and we're doing that quite regularly so that takes preparation as well, obviously, because it's recipe developing, planning um, the shoots and then doing the shoots. And I suppose I love my job so much because it's so varied and you have like so many different things every single day to do. But it does mean that sometimes when those varied things become a bit like overlapping, uh, it can be a bit like, whoa, not to complain because I love it, but it's like, um, it's like any job, you have the ebbs and flows where it's like, sometimes just everything overlaps and you're like, and then other times you're a bit like, wow, it's very chilled at the minute. I don't have, um, you know, too much to worry about and you get your work done quicker, but that's how it is. And this, um, this video is gonna go out, well, it's kind of not chronological the way I'm uploading, bit of a kerfuffle, because I'm working on a project in the bedroom and that's gonna be a separate video. So that will come next week and it's looking so good. Oh my gosh, you're gonna die when you see how good it looks. I'm so excited, my parents came around yesterday to help. It's just looking phenomenal. So I've just put the rosemary oil in and I'm gonna massage it in. I'm gonna go on a walk now. Alex is not gonna join me because he's got really bad hay fever and I said it's probably better if you stay home. I think he's gonna make a loaf of bread. Then we'll have our little Monday morning meeting, which we always do, to see what's going on this week. Probably get anything done at a computer that needs to be get done at a computer in the first hour or two, and then get stuck back into the bedroom. Um, so that's the plan, but I thought I would zoom back, go back in time for the weekend, because we went vintage shopping and I filmed everything that I bought and it's 
a very long section to the video but really fun because we've got so much fun stuff for the photo shoots I mentioned and for the house and um, I got some clothes so yeah really really fun so go back in time to Saturday. <coughs> Hello everyone this is Maddie from the past. I oh, went vintage shopping, antique shopping and I got loads of really good things so I thought I'd share them with you rather than um, not sharing because it's interesting. So we went to that sh shop in Penzance that doesn't have a name but it's next to Weatherspoons and it's incredible. They basically have the most insane selection of vintage stuff. I kind of want to gatekeep it because I don't want everyone in Cornwall to start going there and taking all the good stuff. So please don't go there and take all the good stuff. Leave that for me. <laughs> but also, it's amazing. So go there. Whoops. So I have, ever since we did our living room, been meaning to get more books for the shelves. I have so many books that I want to read and I'm doing a reading challenge. And I, I, we still have a lot of books between me and Alex but those shelves aren't full. And I feel like when I walk into the living room, it doesn't look quite complete. So I wanted to get loads of vintage books that look really nice. I've got loads of these and they're so beautiful. Some of them are very Art Nouveau um, with really, really pretty spines. So this one is Those Three by Emma Marshall. One of them I think Alex said was like a second edition and it cost quite, much, quite a lot of money. It was like 20 quid. The rest of them were about four, four-ish pounds. This is quite cool. So these are really, really awesome. So this was a whole collection of um, Dickens. And look at how gorgeous these are. Look at that spine. It's gold embossed leaves. And you know how much I love botanical leaves and things. So I got basically all of them because I couldn't leave some behind. So beautiful. So we've got... Bleak House, I remember doing that in school. The Pickwick Papers, Hard Times, Pictures from Italy. A lot of this stuff um, is with the purpose of photography. So we are rebranding and redesigning my website. So that means I am investing a lot of time and energy and money into props and into planning. So I've been collecting basically new plates and backgrounds and all that kind of stuff to make my photography more in keeping with my style because for a long time I was just using whatever and it didn't feel like me. So I've been meaning to get these things for so, so long. They had these amazing selection of vintage cutlery. I've already got a lovely set of like rustic cutlery, but I needed a more refined set so that it depends on the picture we're taking for food, whether it's, um, yeah, something that suits a kind of rustic farmhouse feel or something that suits a bit more of a, a fancy silver cutlery like this. So I got, this was 10 pounds, the little spoons. Knives were 23 pounds. The forks were 18 pounds. They're like an almost complete set. Like the forks are slightly different, but they essentially are the same. Soup spoons, 10 pounds and dessert forks, 10 pounds. Unfortunately, they didn't have normal dessert spoons but because this style with the sort of shell is quite a common style i imagine i will find them at some point and the soup spoons will do for now it's not they probably they're not going to become our like main use uh cutlery i think this is the second edition book the burden of angela and look at how unbelievably gorgeous that is i think that what i'm going to do in the living room at some point maybe not not yet because i'm doing the bedroom is really go through the shelves and rearrange things and have some books like facing outwards like almost like they're on display because i do have some unbelievably beautiful books that are really it's a shame for them to be facing like this in their spine the burden of angela by a.m buckton 1904 second edition very good condition oh look, i can hear the clock we've got a clock let me show you that next so we bought a clock and this really reminds me of the clock that I had when I was younger in my parents' home. There was one on their mantelpiece. Given this is probably gonna drive me mad because it is a ticking clock and I remember it used to kind of drive me mad, but it's also kind of comforting. We don't have a clock in the living room and we don't have our Alexa in the living room. And um, sometimes I do that, like I go, Alexa, what's the time? And it'd be nice to have a clock to see what the time is. I'm gonna put that on the piano and I just think it suits because the piano is a space that's like, I don't really know what to put on there. So I think this would look really nice on top of the piano. That was 30 pounds. This handbag is so, so pretty. I feel like this lighting is not the best. Maybe I should sh shoot you over here. So get the lighting from the window. 
This was only eight pounds. It's got like an R embossed on the back. And then on the front, it's this printed sort of floral design. I know we had this discussion about secondhand leather. I'm not gonna go into it again. I purchased secondhand leather because I believe it to be more sustainable and ethical because it literally exists already. So I think that nobody's being harmed by me purchasing this because it's already sitting in a vintage shop somewhere in Penzance. And if anything, it's actually benefiting people because it's um, supporting a business, it's supporting the vintage seller. And yeah, I, that's my, my point of view, always. Everyone has nuance with it, but as a vegan, I purchased secondhand leather because I believe it to be the most ethical and sustainable option. And the reason I got it was because I don't have a dark brown handbag and it's really small. And I just thought every single floral, lovely, pretty dress I have, how great is that gonna look in the evening when all you need to put in here is your, um, your phone, a lipstick, um, your wallet, and then you just, you don't even need your wallet because you've got Apple Pay. I'm getting this for eight quid and I just think it's so unique. I just absolutely love it. It's so, so beautiful. This might be my, my most happy, exciting, what's the word? The best purchase out of everything I got. It is a massive willow jar. And this I plan on putting in our bedroom, I think. It's probably gonna be one of those things that over time moves around the house because it's just so beautiful. So it may begin in the bedroom, it may move to the hallway, it may move to the living room. I'm not sure because we've got a, a willow vase in the living room and that may end up in the bedroom. But I just cannot get over how unbelievably gorgeous this is. I think this was maybe 40 or something pounds. I don't understand why this is so cheap. If there's one thing that I can teach you on this channel, well it's not one thing, there's lots of things I like to teach you on this channel, don't buy new home stuff. Just don't. Unless you're buying stuff that's practical, like I get it, I buy stuff for the kitchen, um, you know, like equipment or utensils. Decorations for your house, there is literally no reason to buy new. There is such an issue with fast homeware that I don't think is talked about enough. So much homeware now is the same as fast fashion. People are buying from Zara, H&M Home, all these other places, you know, just nipping in and buying this, these companies are literally replicating vintage stuff that you can buy from a vintage seller in your town. Secondhand for a fraction of the price, don't buy it new because it won't be as good quality, it won't last as long, it won't have the, the sentiment behind it. You can buy stuff online as well, vintage and antique on Etsy, on Facebook Marketplace. And it does teach you as well this kind of sense of slowing down a bit this like this culture that's not instantaneous i want it now i'm going to get it delivered tomorrow when you buy secondhand and vintage shop it kind of slows you down and teaches you to just buy things as and when you need them like i've been thinking about purchasing a lot of these items for a really long time like i said i've wanted to get some books for the shelves for ages same as the cutlery and a lot of these things have been in my mind for a while i've been collecting willow pieces as well because I just love them. I love blue and I love willow designs. And it, it kind of just teaches you to slow down with your purchases and to not impulse buy. Anyway, long story short, this is gorgeous. I'll show you my collection of willow that I've managed to gather in the last couple months. Lots of my mum, lots of things that my mum got me. Absolutely stunning. How much was this, Alex? Was it 40 something? Yeah, 140. No, it wasn't 140. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. How much was it? I can tell by your face that you're lying. 240. How much was it? Mm, 46. There you go. She gave us an 8% discount. Yeah, that's another thing. If you go to a vintage shop, if you're buying you know, multiple items, they often give you a discount. Like the, the cutlery was 71 and they gave it to us for 65. This is a willow pattern. Oh, la 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 so this is a willow pattern large server. This is quite like beaten up compared to the other willow things I have, but I quite like it. If we're shooting something that's from the side, I quite like the, the kind of, what do you call it? The texture of this, the color of this, it looks really, really beautiful. I, I actually do think I do this a lot. I gain, I get obsessions with things and I go mad for them. And maybe in six months, I'm gonna be like, oh, Maddie, why did you get so many willow things? because now your entire house is full of them. 
This I couldn't leave. I know I've got so many plates already, but it's a large pelfed hand painted, hand painted blue and white plate. I don't think this is willow because it's um, not the, it's not the kind of traditional style of willow. It's just like a, an English or Danish or something scene. And it's very beautiful, but it's got a hook. And I pinned an image recently of a hallway or a kitchen where they had plates hung up and I want to do that either in the hallway, this is gonna go in the hallway or it's gonna go, I'm actually thinking, I'm thinking it's gonna go next to the fridge and I think I'm gonna collect a couple of them to go there. I ch I've changed so much because the obsession I used to have with minimalism has gone right out the window and I just, I am almost more of a maximalist, well I am really with my, my decorating style I think it's because I've gone back to my roots of like my old house, like my mum, we grew up in like a farmhouse, an old farmhouse. And just like my familiar things to me are English, like old houses, that's familiar to me and that's what makes me feel comfortable and comforted. So like in my thirties now, in my old age, I'm like starting to go back to things that make me feel comforted in my, and cozy in my home. Rather than in your twenties, you're experimenting, you wanna kind of like, do the opposite of what you grew up with. You want to like try new things. You want to try out new styles and experiment and copy people. And I feel like you come back around usually to like what you actually just feel is you. Here's some more pretty books. Don't need to go into detail about those. Oh, but the only thing is they're so gorgeous. Look at the, um, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Art Nouveau. Um, I should know this. My brain has gone blank because I literally did four years of art history at like the top university. So why don't I know the name of this? Art Nouveau, I didn't really study it there to be honest. I did Venetian art. This is the one thing that Alex bought, speaking of university, because he did Greek and Latin, fun fact. A lot of you probably didn't know that. And he said that this was one of the books that he had to, all the, oh, it's Ovid. Well, he just was like, oh look, that's really pretty. I did that at uni. I swear I did this as well, because I did a course on ancient history and, and classic poetry, classical poetry. But this has got like a neat little box for it. If the jam jar looks right in the bedroom when it's done, I thought this could go on the chest of drawers or bedside table just for uh, like hair ties, that kind of thing. Knickknack. All for my knickknacks. And then this is a set of teacups. I won't show you all of them. These are the plates. I'll show you one. But I got four willow teacups because we're doing a photo shoot in a few weeks for a picnic. And I thought we could take the willow plates and the teacups to have like a bit of an afternoon tea situation. Look how gorge. This is the milk jug. How much was this? I don't know. All of these things are so cheap. They were like four pounds, six pounds. The lighting is struggling because I've got a window behind me. Maybe actually I should put you back here again. It's the window behind me that's struggling. Yeah, there's, um, they were all like, yeah, four pounds here, three pounds there. Little, um, kind of like a sugar, sugar jar or something. Also adorable. The final thing I got in there was this massive chopping board. Can you see how big this is compared to me? This was 44 pounds, which compared to the stuff I see online, I swear that I saw one that was like a hundred pounds or 200 pounds on Etsy and stuff. I think this is so such a steal. And this is gonna be great for photography. A lot of these things are, I can do a big platter. It can go, you know, on another background to give some sort of warmth to it. And this also can live, I'm thinking it could live right here behind these chopping boards or I could just swap them out. Oh, it's probably not gonna work there actually because of the, oh, that's so annoying. That's where I envisaged it to go. That's where the, whatchamacallit, the Sheila made. Well, I'll find somewhere for it. It's gold anyway. That was everything from that shop. A lot of stuff, I know. And then I went into the vintage clothes shop that I've forgotten the name of. I'll put that on screen, completely forgotten what it's called. And again, that shop, I only looked at the dresses because I picked out like six dresses. I had to put some back. I didn't look at the jumpers, jackets, shorts, trousers, anything or tops because I thought if I do that, I'm just, I need to just not. It's, I just have an addiction. I think it's again, I'm going back to my like childhood, my comforts and my favorite hobby when I was growing up as a teenager was charity shopping and vintage shopping for clothes. It's all I did, it's basically where I got all my clothes from. I got all my clothes from charity shops, 
vintage shops or Primark, <laughs> they're very occasionally, or New Look. And then very occasionally, if I saved up enough money, I'd get something from Topshop. But often what I would do is look on Topshop's website or in magazines and then try and find the replicas in vintage shops, charity shops, New Look or Primark. <laughs> And it just makes me, well, I went in there and the smell of it, I was like, this just sends me back to my, like, being a teenager. And I just, I, I miss that part of my life. I just love it. Anyway, this is a gorgeous shirt dress. I could not believe how beautiful this is. And it's this really lovely, well, it's 100% cotton, size 12. And I just could not believe how gorgeous this is. This sort of dress, I feel like would be so expensive if, if you were to buy this new because it's 100% cotton and because it has so much skirt fabric. Look at all of this. I think this was about 55 pounds. I think she's taken all the labels off. Okay, this is officially my new favorite dress of all time. I just said that to Alex. Look at how much fabric there is. Oh my gosh. Look at this. It's amazing. Over the moon with this, definitely needs a belt. I only have a black one. I really need to get a, um, like I just said, a secondhand brown belt. This is a summery dress, and I feel like you want to wear like tan and brown leather accessories with summery dresses like this. Maybe that's just me. I feel like this, this belt is too much. It's too thick for one. How gorgeous is this? I'm actually over the moon, and it's a lovely, yeah, cotton fabric. It's a little big, again, it's, that's the only problem, is that all the excess fabric sometimes like, isn't the most flattering, because then it kind of makes your waist look bigger. It's a little bit see-through, so I'll have to wear nude underwear or wear a slip. Wear it with my little Vivea. And like, I feel like I'm Audrey Hepburn or um, Grace Kelly in the 50s because this is what they wore. Love it, love it. It's so comfy. This is another lovely cotton fabric. So it's size 22, um, so it's a bigger size on me, but I figured that it would just be very comfortable so I can belt it. It's got like this little belt or I can use my own belt. But this is how I shop. I let go of sizing and I look at larger items. So like medium or large for me because I'm so tall. I just think that vintage clothes and charity shopping, there's one thing I give you advice on is just buy the bigger sizes than what you are. Buy a couple sizes up because I think the old sizes as well, they are a bit smaller, but also it just guarantees they're gonna fit you, you can belt them. It just, I just feel like it all round works better. So th these are larger, but it means that it's gonna be really comfortable. And also because jumpsuits, I'm really tall, they often just ride up. So I'm really hoping that's not the case with this, but I don't think this is even gonna look big on me. I think it's gonna look really good. Well, that's the idea anyway. This, is, this makes me laugh because how is this a size 22? So this is what I mean about buying a bigger size. This said it was a size 22, I'm a size 12 or sometimes size 14. And this fits really like exactly how I'd want it to fit. Given it's not the most flattering around the waist just because there's a lot of excess fabric, but I think it would look better if I maybe, sometimes I wore my own belt, but I really love it, really practical. Love the collar. I really like black on me, so win. I think that was a similar price. I think this one was a little bit less money because it's polyester, feels like it. Um, this is just a lovely polka dot wrap dress. Another win. <laughs> this shop is now my favorite shop. Girls, if you are looking at stuff new online, stop. Go to your local town or local city, or if you live in a town or city, go into town and go into the local vintage or antique shop if you have one. Or if your town doesn't or your city doesn't, go, well your city probably should do, every city does. Look for a town nearby, bring your friends, go on a shopping trip and get vintage secondhand dresses if you are similar in aesthetic and style to me because I don't remember the last time I bought a dress that, I'm out of breath because I'm running up and down the stairs and slinging the clothes off. Dresses like this, like wrap dresses, they are never, long enough for me. This looks like it's been homemade. This a thousand percent is homemade. Yeah, this hem literally goes right to my ankles. That doesn't really happen ever. I feel like this bit is universally flattering. It's very flattering on me. Um, the only issue is this is, this is not tight enough here because it's maybe a bit too big for me. 
how do I solve that problem? Yeah, so this front panel is a little bit too big, but I think what I can do is I can safety pin it. It's not that big of a deal. It's just that here it kind of, usually it would cinch under. But look at this skirt and how floaty it is. What a dream. What a dream. And with these shoes, these are my Vivea Aria 9, Aria number fives. I think I should have a discount code, so I'll link that. Favourite flats. This colour especially, I've got them in a few colours, but this colour goes with everything. The last thing, this is quite the shop, shopping haul. At least it's not new stuff. <laughs> this is what I interpret as either little apples or little leaves. But it could be anything. It could be little paint splatters or um, little peaches or little lemons. Just felt very Mediterranean and from a distance. Yeah, I feel like I would interpret that as loads of little fruits. But I think on closer inspection, it is loads of little leaves. This is the only one that I think might... Well, no, it's size 14. But then it's vintage. So sometimes vintage stuff says it's 14 and actually it's quite small. It's quite short. So that's my only worry. No, actually it's not. It's got a belt that comes with it, which I just feel like that feels so expensive because it's got an actual fabric belt with this belt loop thing, whatever you call it. So I'm excited to try that on. Don't like the length as much because it's like a bit more of a front, a bit annoying. Oh, maybe it's fine. No, it is fine. It's probably because I'm comparing it to the other ones. Let me know what you think because it's a shorter length. I think I was just loving the long dresses. I suppose it's quite flattering in that um, when dresses are like tea dresses like this, they're quite like straight, so they make you look long, which is not something I necessarily need. I don't need to look any longer, but I like the pattern. I like the pockets. I think I just need to style it um, and wear a different bra because I've just got one of those like loose bralettes on. But I think with my, any of these handbags, even the one downstairs, but maybe just for something more casual, this is from Bean London. This is vegan leather. They sent this to me recently and this feels a bit more understated. I also quite like the contrast because it's quite a modern style of bag based on like a classic shape because it's got no hardware it feels a bit more modern so it kind of modernizes the outfit a bit and you could wear it with like trainers this dress i feel it would look good or you could go go down the matchy matchy just i'm going on a picnic vibe and wear a basket bag because this is a proper picnic dress isn't it this dress is giving I'm the main character in a rom-com written by a man and this is what um, they want girls to wear cute little summer dresses <laughs> or this secondhand leather one I got in that same vintage shop actually this is my favorite yeah this is from the same shop a few weeks back that's what sparked the secondhand leather debate love it see how these show that shoes go with absolutely everything I'm excited for when I do this dressing room because I'm getting more into showing you my outfits and I can actually like have space in here where I can think about where the camera can go. It's quite a small space, but I definitely can set it up so I can have like a shelf or something where the camera can go and I can show you or a corner where there are mirrors and it looks a bit less of a mess, but what a win. And I got a few things from Archie Browns. This is from my friend, Helen Roots. Um, asparagus. Strawberries, go check them out if you're in Cornwall, you want to buy veg locally. And then I got this from Archie Browns, New Lynn Fermentary Fennel and Mint Kraut and New Lynn Fermentary Kimchi. Alex likes the sauerkraut, I like the kimchi. I like both, but I got the kraut for him. And then I got some Sagaya. I've had this, I've been trying this since I first went vegan and you can very rarely find it, but it's seriously good. And this is pastrami style slices. So very excited. And then my favorite on bar, they don't, they didn't sell a bar, like an actual chocolate bar. So I've got the buttons. Very sad they didn't have the actual bar. And then the last thing I actually wanted to show you, which is interesting, don't know if you have ever heard of this sort of thing, is I signed up to a thing called Cocoon Club, where basically if you're interested in designer handbags, if you're not, you can skip this and you'll see on the timestamp where the next section is. 
But if you're interested in design handbags, then there's a website called Cocoon Club where you rent handbags. So it's like a circular sharing platform. Same as a website similar like Her. I have rented some clothing from Her before. For my wedding, I rented two dresses for the Friday and for the Sunday. And I've also rented dresses from them for events. So I don't have to buy new. And it's just a really fantastic way of being sustainable with clothing. And if you enjoy fashion, if you enjoy designer clothes, if you enjoy new things and dressing up, then her and the Cocoon Club are amazing. So this is a handbag that I have been eyeing up as a second hand purchase, as my next designer handbag pur purchase. So I got a second hand Chanel handbag last year from Luxury Promise and at this point, if I wear it as much, if I continue to wear it as much as I do now, the cost per wear is going to be insane because I wear it every time I go out, unless I'm just doing casual, like, you know, chores, errands, that kind of thing. I always wear it everywhere and I love it. It is my favourite bag and it's, I'm going to have it for the rest of my life and I'm going to pass it down to my children. This handbag is a Gucci horse bit handbag and I found one on Vestiaire Collective that I'm thinking of buying. I don't know, we'll see, but... I want to have handbags that stand the test of time and are classic styles that I will wear with everything and I'm not someone who's going to be buying loads of designer handbags like I'm just never going to be that person but I do like nice handbags I always have done so I always wanted them and I've never been able to afford them so now I'm in a position where I can it's kind of a nice way a very like physical way to say you know you work hard and you can enjoy nice things I know it's material it doesn't matter like obviously that goes without saying I have a lovely home and family and pets and all of that and Alex that matter a billion times more. But sometimes it's nice to just grab a nice handbag. It gives you a little bit of like, oh, that's so nice to have such a lovely handbag and celebrate your successes. So Cocoon Club, you basically pay a fee every month to rent a handbag. So someone else owns this. I don't own this. They rent it to me and then I send it back and I swap it for another handbag. I thought it was a cool idea and I wanted to try it out for a month. So loving this handbag so far. It's so beautiful. And also it's a good way to test out things before you go ahead with purchasing them. So if you've been eyeing up something that's really expensive, like a handbag, then you can rent it first. Same goes for maybe a dress or something. If you found it on her, you could rent it first, try it and then be like, how does this feel? So I think it works better probably for things like handbags because you can like wear it, see how much you're actually pairing it with outfits. And if you rent a handbag and you're like, I literally wore it twice in that month or once, then it's obviously not a handbag that's worth purchasing because probably not going to fit into your wardrobe. Mm -hmm. However, this I already imagine is something I'm going to wear a lot because of the colour, the style. I love that it's not in your face with the branding. I just love how it opens. It's really roomy inside. It's got like soft material inside. And then this strap gets longer. So it's very multifunctional. So you can wear it this long or you can wear it longer. Oh, shall I show you? So you can wear it longer. Can you wear it crossbody? Thing is, I'm very tall. So whenever I wear crossbody things, they look like they're really, <laughs> like the Chanel handbag. I see loads of girls wearing them crossbody on Pinterest. And I'm like, I just can't do that because it, go it ends up up here. Cause I'm just, I'm like six foot. So it doesn't really translate, but you could, I can wear it like that. Um, if I'm like, I probably wouldn't because it just crossbody with the handbags that are like this. Don't, oh, actually no, it gets a bit longer. Not quite. Yeah. And then you, do that, so maybe that's better. Yeah, that's a little bit better. It still looks a little funny on me. It's not something I would probably do, but you can wear it long like that. And I just think it's very classic. The only other handbag that I considered instead of this would be like a Mulberry one or like an Oxford satchel. That's the vibe it's giving. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, maybe something I cancel the subscription after a month because I may be like, you know, why am I renting design handbags? Who cares? I flip between caring and sometimes not caring, but Anyway, that's my mega, mega, mega haul. Sorry if you hate that kind of thing. I know lots of you don't like when I share lots of things I've bought, but I'm just trying to be me from now on. No longer trying to cater myself to people who don't relate to me and I'm not endeavoring to be relatable to anyone anymore. I'm trying to be myself. And then the people who are similar to me or who like me or who are just interested and aren't like me, but they like me anyway, they can enjoy my channel. And if you don't like me or you don't, you, you kind of get annoyed at, I don't know, me showing you things, then it's probably time to find another channel. Anyway, I'm gonna put all this away because <laughs> it's so much stuff and I'll see you in the future. I hope you enjoyed that. We're now back in present day. Probably feels like a very long time for you. 
but it's not very long for me. So I'm just gonna part my hair down the middle and today I was should have washed my hair really, but it's probably a good thing I'm using the oil. I'm going to slick it back in a bum. And the Denman brush is forever my favorite hairbrush. Great for if you have wavy curly hair. Also great for slicking back. Also, because I can hear the builders. There's um so much progress outside, it's unbelievable. We basically have a patio. There's one section they need to do, some grouting and the electrics need to be done. And then we just need the carpenter to come over and um, finish the sofa and we are done. Getting my eyebrows redone. Tomorrow? Is it tomorrow? Or Wednesday? Wednesday, because the lamination has definitely stopped working but I just used the Refi brow gel. I was using that anyway. When, when you get it laminated, you still need to brush them up, but the difference is when I brush them up now, they don't really do very much. Whereas when they're laminated, they fully stand up and they look really satisfying. Anyway, let's get on and drink my coffee and take Bobby on a walk. I'm gonna listen to I, a little update on my reading challenge. I have finished the Northern Lights trilogy, the His Dark Materials. I am in the middle of reading Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before, but because it's about like mental health, sometimes I'm not in the mood, but it's really, really good. I recommend anyone who has struggled with any form of mental health struggles to listen to it, it's so good. But I've started Outlander because I love the TV show and I wanted something romantic and period drama and kind of like exciting and with lots of, I don't know, I'm assuming there'll be lots of twists and turns and I've kind of forgotten the TV series, so I thought it'd be a great one to listen to. So that's what I'm gonna to listen to on my morning walk. A quick sneak peek into the future because the next video will kind of go back and show you the progress but look at our patio and then you can see here today they have got rid of those horrible stairs that I never really wanted so they're, they're going so they've got to get rid of that concrete because there's a concrete base and that's obviously where we want to plant some things so that needs to go. Got to make myself some breakfast now. I'm gonna have a smoothie. I've been having a smoothie like although actually am I? I've got all this fresh. No I'm not. I've got all this fresh yogurt and sorry, fresh fruits. And although that's quite good for pudding. No, I'm gonna save those because that's a lovely pudding for later. I'm gonna have a smoothie. I'm trying to eat more fruit because it's summer and I just felt like for a period of time I wasn't having as much fruit and I missed it. So I'm gonna have a smoothie. Oh, I knew I would do that. I put this beer in their freezer yesterday for Alex so that it would be cold and I was like, Make sure that you don't forget in my head that it's in there. And of course I forgot. So that's kind of bad. It's leaked a bit. Oopsie. And um, let me gather all my ingredients. I sometimes think how if I was like five foot two or something, filming would be so much easier because. <laughs> ah. Alex is going to come down and freak out how I've um, propped this up. Oh. Nothing? Yeah. I thought you'd be mad at how I propped this camera up. <laughs> um, banana and raspberries. I was just on the phone to the electrician. And it's great news. We have to take, we already kind of knew this. We have to take our ceiling down. Oh, just, you're on the journey with us of the money pit that is this house when we moved in. We never would have imagined the hurdles we have to cross, but I imagine every single old house is the same. If you're modernizing and updating a house that hasn't been modernized or updated, it's inevitable and you, know, you just have to kind of take it on the chin and be like, you know, this is our, hopefully our forever home and there will be problems because different people have lived here, different people have done different things and you don't know what, what the situation is. And so we want lights outside. We don't want to just go with solar lights because I just feel like they're not, they're just not good enough. I want 
actual proper lights and we also want a light at the back door because there isn't one so it's really quite dark um so it's kind of like safety it's kind of just for visuals it will look really lovely to have lights outside I'm not going crazy we're just having a few lights in the sleepers where the sofa is so that you can see it when you're out there and then um some lights along the front flower beds like maybe three and a light outside the back door but because there's loads of holes in the ceiling already they need to take the whole ceiling down which it feels like lots of projects what happens that kind of it sets off a snowball effect on everything because then i'm like oh if the ceiling's coming down you're gonna have to you have to pay someone to put so i have to speak to the builders about someone else is gonna have to come and put another piece of plaster back up and fix it and decorate it and all that sort of stuff and our hallway is a project that needs to be done because it is I don't know, I feel bad sometimes talking about this stuff because it feels like I, all I do is point out everything wrong with the house. But there are so many things wrong and it just feels like there's, it's a never ending list. And um, it's, it's, not, it's not even aesthetic things, it's just problematic things. So like obviously when, if you've been watching the whole renovation process at the start, we had to rewire, we had to do the fireplaces because none of them worked. We had to refit the oven because that was, uh, it, didn't have, it literally didn't have an earth wire. It was like you would get an electric shock if you touched the oven. We had no idea about this. The septic tank obviously have, had to be changed, which was a huge sum of money that we didn't expect. Um, we're gonna repoint. That's just maintenance. You have to do that if you live in a house that's made of stone. Um, and there's paint on there, so we want to get rid of the paint because that's also causing damp issues. We had to do the windows. We don't have to. We could have fixed the windows, but a lot of them didn't open and we really wanted to do the windows. We knew that when we first bought the house though. That was kind of, I, I was aware of that when buying it, but that was something I wanted to do. Um, the garage was leaking and that was something that again, it was kind of like, we could have just fixed the roof and left it as a garage, but then halfway through we were like, actually, do we need a garage? Let's make it into a room, which was an added thing that we chose. But there's just been a lot of things that have been like, like that. Um, and the hallway, the stairs were put in, I think a couple, a few years ago. And I think they must've been just done by a local builder because they definitely would not fit any sort of safety regulations because there's a corner that's really tight that I fell up this morning, spilt my coffee everywhere, dropped this camera, dropped my phone. And I do that every other day. I fall down the stairs, I fall up the stairs. Whenever anyone comes over, a tradesman always fall down the stairs. Um, my mum is always a bit scared of going up and down the stairs. Uh, because of that step so I skip that step but if you're carrying something you fall down it so it's too narrow basically it's like where the corner is they've not given enough space for the steps so you slip down it and it's just dangerous and I don't want to hurt myself so it's really on my mind it's becoming increasingly on my mind that the stairs need to be moved back to where they were so I think the stairs used to kind of go up this way and then around and they've made it into like a, a kind of curved up straight up and then they put the ensuite in i want to get rid of the ensuite i think it's pointless it's so, so small that you can't even really get in it people when they stay they rarely use it they use the main bathroom because it's so small uh, most of my family are six foot and above so it's just not it's not really very easily usable to sit on the toilet you're like this um and so i would love to get rid of the ensuite and put the stairs back where they were and change this floor because this floor also is wibbly wobbly messy i think i mentioned that when we did the kitchen that we would probably change it at some point and it looks it looks dirty so <laughs> it just no matter how much you mop and clean it's always dirty i think that it's going to set off a bit of a snowball where we need to when the electrician's here we need to maybe have a have a sit down and think about what things might need to be done and move the order of them so this is what i mean about these floors we've hoovered these last night and we mop them regularly and they always are dirty. There's all these little, all these like little speckles you see don't go away. They're always there. And then, um, this one isn't the same. Um, and they're all different heights, so it's not ideal. Um, but yeah, this, you can see all the holes from the, when we had the electrics done, but this is all of our electrics. So this is our, what should we call it? This is our solar panel stuff, which is quite big. And then this is all our electrics. The cupboards are pretty ugly, but obviously they're just temporary, I imagine. Um, but it's whether we could move them or just make it look way tidier, have, have a carpenter build a nice big cupboard here or something, lots of options. But yeah, this, this is the, the culprit, this stair. It's just not wide enough, so you fall down it. Um, and I don't think that that's 
big enough to be a, an actual stair so it kind of this is how our stairs go and i think because this is a georgian house what i imagine is this would have been the front front door back in the day and i think the stairs would have gone up and up like you know the half height kind of stairs where they go half up across and then half up that's what i imagine and i reckon this door was added i don't think this would have been a door because this feels like a new door so i think there wouldn't have been a door here and that would have been the entrance to the kitchen but that's just my my thinking i don't know if that's correct so that's another thing maybe um if we change the stairs we would don't know what we do about this door that's the thought process right now is um i think we need to have a little meeting me and al write down a long list and then have a meeting with our builder and discuss sorry for how chatty this video is i know some of you really don't like that um some of you really like it some of you just say you'd rather see things happening um yeah i try i try but sometimes weeks are like this where it's more about just chatting about things because i don't live a jet setting influencer lifestyle where i travel and do exciting things all the time i don't get invited to many events i do get invited to some but they're mostly in london i live like a small quiet life in cornwall so renovations take time and a lot of part of renovations is just thinking about what, what you need to do and mulling it over but i do appreciate that's probably not the most entertaining thing to watch so I apologize if you are finding that annoying, but there's lots of fun things to come, I promise. Time to get on with my day. Good evening, I have been wallpapering all day and I had a very exciting meeting today actually that means that very secret project I've been talking to you about for ages and the secret project I went to London for will be announced shortly and I can't wait to share it with you, it's so exciting. <sighs> It's just made me very excited having that meeting. Um, but yeah, we're having dinner. We are having these plant kitchen Asian style kebabs in a big salad. So I'm just gonna mix the salad up now. Alex has gone into the garden to get lettuce. Makes me sad we have not been tending to the garden at all because we have been renovating or redecorating our bedroom. And also the patio is being done. So during the day, the patio is kind of not accessible. You can't be kind of going down back and forth to garden because the builders are using the patio and often they're doing stuff that you know needs to dry so we've kind of not been tending to it which makes me sad but it's life i'm busy with work and then redecorating your bedroom it's kind of like it's just it's a bit all involved so i'm gonna make a big salad with lettuce rocket we're gonna have some yummy kimchi that i bought the other day a whole cucumber and some tomatoes this sauce this looks like some kind of vegan bulgogi style barbecue. So I'll make that some kind of dressing, maybe some tahini. I'll mix the tahini with that and some soy sauce, I think, to dress it all and some lime juice. So it'll be quite a nice, refreshing dinner. summer dinner i don't know if alex is gonna have kimchi so i've left it off but i added some extra dressing on top i might have a slice of bread as well he made this earlier but look how good that looks oh my gosh i'm so excited do you want kimchi that was a 10 out of 10 dinner what did you rate it out Ooh. six out of ten really yeah quite low i thought the plant kitchen kebabs were quite good no i liked it a lot you made the dressing really runny for some reason <laughs> but apart from that i kept on apologizing i was like i'm really sorry the dressing is really runny was that the 
some of the salad we had from our takeaway. It was all of it. Well, the whole, oh, plus the, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was really nice. It was a nice summer meal. If anyone couldn't but, gather, Alex was kidding when he said that, by the way. Yeah. That one day soon we could have that out on the patio. Yes, yes, yes. we can. We can have it on the patio. Right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry it was a bit chaotic and a bit chatty, but I hope you enjoyed anyway. Yeah. And we'll see you next time for a really exciting video and an update on the bedroom, the full bedroom, not the full makeover, but like the wallpapering and doing it all in the patio. There's so much we need to share with you. Bye. <laughs> no.